you may remember this cheap USB soldering iron from such videos as the most recent mailbag. Just for a recap, in case you haven't seen that yet, and why the heck haven't you, this is the cheapest available on uh, eBay 5 volt 8 watt USB powered soldering iron. It claims to be good for any number of things. It claims to heat up quickly, um, momentary push button. However, when we try it out, as seen in the mailbag video, nothing happens. No current is drawn from the power supply. The LED that is promised to be in here doesn't come on and the tip doesn't get hot. So let's figure out what's wrong with this thing. I did already do this test, but if you didn't see that video, um, just first thing is to prove that there is actually power getting through the cable and there is, so that's not the issue. The issue is somewhere in this thing. So, uh, let's get in it and find out what's going on. Actually, I guess first I'll probably take the, the tip thing off here. Just screws in. That's fairly tight. Oh, wow, that looks a little cheesy. Not sure if that's malformed or if that's how it's supposed to be. Let's pretend for now that that's how it's supposed to be. Um, that doesn't want to screw off, so... Yeah, that's how it comes off. Just gentle spudgerizing. Now then, three screws in the body here. That one came out. That one came out. Just gentle persuasion. And that one doesn't want to come out, but I think it's unscrewed enough. Oh, my little button. Ah, my little pushy button is actually a little ball. Park him over there. So, we have a circuit board that doesn't look like it's doing very much. At least not on the top side. There is the promised LED. And we have a jack, which is basically an audio jack. No, it is an audio jack. Um, essentially a headphone connector. And I notice, before I get too deep in here, it looks like it's got three electrical contacts on it which means it's a basic stereo jack. However, this one's only two. I wonder why they would use that. Maybe it's just easier to get the part. So it's on the underside here. Oh, there is a little bit going on on there. What do we got? Let's zoom in super tight. Uh, looks like we got power coming in from the connector. Goes through a zero ohm resistor by the looks of that to a transistor, to the other side of the transistor goes to there, which goes to the tip. Okay, so that transistor's clearly turning it on. It comes from another transistor and another one. Where's the pushy button? Right there. And that looks like a common rail. Yeah, that goes all the way down to there, so that's common. Okay. Where's Mr. LED? LED is those two connections there. So it's got a resistor to the common. So what is that side of the LED? That looks like that's the flat side. And that's the rounded side. I can never remember which one is which on an LED. Um, but I think that's going to be an important clue in a minute here. 
for reverse engineering. Um, should I need to do that? Got a wee capacitor in here. So push button. Hmm. Takes that one in there. Which is one side of that transistor. Okay. Actually, I'm going to see how much closer I can get in here and try and see if there's any numbers discernible on those transistors. Oh, there we go. A09T on that one and BA on that one. HF. Is that the three of them? Yeah, that's all of them. Okay. All those close up quickly. And see what's what. Okay, I went and looked up the three transistors on there. Uh, one of them, the... This one here, which appears to... Um, connect the negative to the one side of the heater is in fact a MOSFET uh, which can handle 30 volts across it whatever um, but it can handle 5.8 amps drain current so that's obviously doing the heavy lifting this one's called a BA and it is a little PNP and this one is called an HF and it is a little NPN um, and it looks like this BA PNP is controlling or driving the MOSFETs uh, gate which makes reasonable sense um, and the push button triggers there's a little capacitor here and some resistors so I'm guessing without going through a full schematic drawing exercise I'm guessing that acts as a timer with this first transistor and gives you a certain length of on time. But the important things, um, I've got the positive and negative polarities figured out there. And I'm get my 5 volt source and zoom out so you can see what the hell I'm doing. Um, and I'll plug in there. Get the meter happening. Come on, behave. Uh, the circuit's expecting negative up there and positive there, and of course it's not getting it. Um, and these are going to, these connections on here, this is going to be the sleeve. This is going to be the tip. And that's going to be the ring, which on this isn't going to work out because this is not a tip ring sleeve. So right now, if, if I go, as I said, from the minus to what's supposed to be the positive, nothing happens. But if I move over to there and pull that in where you can see it, so between the tip and the sleeve, because that's the connections we have, there we go. So there is voltage getting here. It's just because they used the stupid wrong connector there. Nothing happens. So my options as I see them, I can chop this connector off and replace it with a proper tip ring sleeve connector. Maybe not that one because it's bent, but a proper one nonetheless. Or I could chop that off and solder it directly on there and get rid of this connector. Or actually, could I even run it right through the middle there? Hmm. That's a possibility. Or I could just modify this board uh, by probably cutting that track there and jumpering it over to this pin which is more likely what I should do. Actually, let me plug that back in again and just see. 
So this one we know is the positive, and we know that the negative's there, but is there a, there is. Okay, so right now these two are being basically, are both connected to the tip. So I would have to definitely cut that and jump right over there. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. And I think what I'll do is I'll chop the end off the cable and just attach it directly in there. If I'm lucky, the cable will slide right through the center of there. And I can just use that as the strain relief. Now then, is that going to fit through there? No, it's not. Okay. So I'll desolder this then. straightforward. I'll strip this guy back a little bit here. Oh, how convenient. A red wire and a black wire. What are the odds that they are actually what we think they mean? Is black negative and red positive? Yes, it is. Okay. One never knows. So, oh, I can't use those as strain reliefs. Sure, I can. Where's my needly pliers? Okay, let's do this the other way around then. I'm doing this for strain relief purposes. Just so that the solder joint isn't taking the full brunt of any jerking around that I do. And then to Mr. Positive, what's going on with him? That one's not behaving as well. Yeah, I'll fight with this and come back in a second. There, got it stuffed in. Got a quick touch. Okay. That ought to do it. Now then, actually, we should be able to go with this right now, shouldn't we? Yeah. I don't need to... I'll plug it in through there, though. So there's some indication of what's going on. And I don't have... Oh, I should put the tip back on, I guess. Huh? Where did it go in my pile of crap? Jam that into there. I got power. And I'm drawing one amp. Look at that. Power off. Power on. Okay. Now the real test of a soldering iron. Presumably it's getting hot. It's doing what a soldering iron is supposed to do. It's melting solder. 
That's awesome. Cool. And it shut itself off. Okay. Why did it shut itself off? Because the battery died. Okay. I'm going to plug it in over here to my USB power bar. So right now it is drawing it down to uh, 4.3 volts and it's pulling 0.85 of an amp. Turn it off and yes, yeah, strong nothing. Turn it back on. Let's see how long that lasts. Okay, that's a minute and it's still running. Hmm, okay, maybe it doesn't time out. But anyway, that's... That's cool, it actually works. Oops, I'm going to put it back together. Come on, shut yourself off. Well, I guess I have to just unplug it then to shut it off. Okay, I'm going to let that cool down so I don't burn myself. I'll put it back together, including... Where'd my little ball go here? Oh, it's not magnetic, that ball. Yeah. Move my sign around. Including the little ball that acts as a push-button pusher. It's kind of neat. Are we still hot? Hot enough to sizzle that. Okay. Okay, I've got an assortment of things to try and solder with this. Let's start with something that needs the least amount of heat. I've got one of these surface mount soldering practice kits. Okay, now let's try this. Did that take? Did I miss? I probably missed. Okay, that's fairly solid. It might be a little cold. We'll touch it up later. So now then, doing this through the camera is incredibly hard. That looks okay. That looks like the best of the three of them. Refold that one. Okay. Let's get my magnifier. Where did it go? Let's see what that looks like. That was Q3 that I just did. That's a little bit blobby. Those two aren't bad. Uh oh, I've lost it. I don't know. That's, that's a bit excess amount of solder, but it looks at least as good as the other ones that I was practicing on. Okay, so for really tiny stuff it works okay, which doesn't surprise me because it's got a super fine tip on it. Let's try it on something a little bit more weighty. For instance, putting the pins on this Arduino Nano. The header pins. Because they are bigger and they will suck more heat away. So, get a focus on that and let's see what happens. That's not bad. So, plated through hole and a long header pin doesn't heat up quite as it doesn't heat up quite as fast as my plug in the wall iron but this isn't really the ideal tool for major production kind of stuff I don't think I think it's more intended to be a portable tool that you 
pull out when you need it. Sort of as a replacement for the old gas-powered irons, um, the butene-powered irons, which I have one around here someplace, but the tip is kind of burned off it because I used it so much back in my pro audio days out in the field. And I just haven't been able to find a replacement tip for that brand. I don't know even if that brand is still made anymore. But this is slow, but it does the job. Even with these these pins that draw the heat away, right? And these big plated through holes. That's not too bad. I'm just gonna... I mean, it's not some of my neatest work, but let's see what... That's... Okay, I would pass that, I guess. All right, let's try something a little bit harder. I've got a chunk of 18 gauge solid wire. Twist this together. And see if I can solder that. I think that's probably going to be the limit for this thing and its capabilities, but we'll see. Where is my zoom here? Okay, there we go. So, clean the tip on my sponge again. Still on. Bit of solder on there. You know what? I think I'll turn it off now. That worked. Where are we here? Look at that. Solder flowed in and around everywhere that it should have. That's surprising. Let me just reset my camera into its normal orientation here. I am actually surprised at this little guy. For what it is, it was like, what, five or six bucks or something I got it for at auction? That's pretty damn good. Now, I'm going to try one more thing here. I've got this little battery, which I've been charging for a while, so hopefully it won't cack. And I'll zoom in just a little bit here so you can see it. So there we go. That it looks like it's going to want to pull just about a full amp from a power supply that stays solid at 5 volts. That's not too shabby at all. We'll see how long this thing lasts. I mean, plus, it had the obvious problem of not working right out of the box. That's a major downside. But with one minor modification, that being remove this and chop that off, as seen earlier, I think it, I think it's definitely a solid thing to haul around just as an emergency soldering iron. So there you go. It's not going to replace my soldering station. It's not going to replace my good old Weller WP35. But for what it is, I like it. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments down in the comment zone down yonder, I will talk to you later.